All night long, French troops have been taking up posts near the Rue de Carousel, blocking all the avenues leading to and from the guillotine. We could hear their muffled steps and the whispered commands of the officers as Tony and I took turns in peering out through the heavy curtains that covered the grimy window of our hideout. A small room over the shop of a violin maker. They aren't taking any chances on tomorrow, Blakeney. No, those are all choice troops, probably hand-picked by Citizen Chauvelin and the Committee of Public Safety. Murderers. Might as well come away from that window, Tony. Draw the curtains. I don't know how you can be so casual, Blakeney. Our entire plan seems ruined. Well, then we'll change it. Wait until I get this lamp lit. You mean you're still going to try to make this rescue come off? I've given my word. Yes, but... Tony, when I was a small boy, I went to school here in Paris. I know that. My instructor was a fine man, rich in wisdom and a love of life. But what has that to do with... He you? had a son, a boy my age. We ate together, shared the same room. I was British, he was French. We were of different parentage, but we lived like brothers. We took a vow of brotherhood. The boy's name was... Jean-Pierre Lamont. Lamont? Yes, Tony. The man they plan to lead to the guillotine tomorrow. I wondered why you were so intent on saving the life of a provincial school teacher. But how did that monster Chauvelin find out you intend to save Lamont? Why should he think the Scarlet Pimpernel would make a special effort to rescue Lamont? Well, I'm afraid that's my fault. I sent Lamont a note at the prison telling him not to despair. It was intercepted. Good heavens, I, I hope you didn't sign your true name. No, only the insignia of the Scarlet Pimpernel. Ah. And now all those troops on guard. Ah, this entire sector is like a trap. And we have to make our rescue attempt in the very shadow of the guillotine. I'm afraid so, Tony. Now, if we're going to arrange a new plan, let's do it. Thank you, Tony. All right, well, get those maps of the city. Spread the mark on the table. You've committed this entire sector to memory. I dare say you could draw facsimiles of these maps without consulting them. Yes, but uh, they help. Now, somewhere in here, Tony, there's a hole. An exit that Chauvelin and his men will have overlooked. I don't see how. Once the prisoner is brought into the square in the tumbril, the soldiers can form a solid phalanx. Nobody will be permitted to enter the square or leave it. Nobody except... Other condemned prisoners? Mm? Lamont's tumbrin will be carefully guarded, but the others will be herded like cattle as usual. If I could slip into one of them, and and you could replace the driver, it can be done, Tony. Here, where Rue de la Porte intersects with the Rue de Carousel. Yes, but that's where the tumbrils assemble before they journey to the prison to transport the condemned. Exactly. And the hour of assembly is just before dawn. It will be dark enough for us to overcome one of the drivers and install you in his place. Yes, but the, the driver will be known to the mounted guard assigned to ride with his tumbril. I have a particular driver in mind. I can make you look enough like him with proper makeup to pass muster at the barracks dinner table. Yes, I believe that, but what can you do with my voice? I'm not as clever as you, Blakeney. Oh, wrap your throat in a rag and pretend hoarseness. The man you will imitate has a whisper of a voice anyhow. He seldom uses it. You... you mean the, the chap they call La Roche? The perfect choice, wouldn't you say? We watched him at an inn one night. He was drinking alone. It was evident the others despised him. Mm -hmm. Would that hurt our plan? Oh, oh, bless me if I don't think you're right. He's perfect. Good. Well, I'll get the makeup kit and go to work on your face at once. It took less than half an hour to make Tony's face so like the face of the tumble driver La Roche that I might have defied the driver's mother to tell them apart. Then I went to work on my own face, transforming it with lines of suffering and terror, the kind of face that would not seem amiss in a tumble filled with men about to die. When I finished, we slipped out of the rear of the building and headed for the tumble rendezvous at Rue de la Porte. There are the drivers. Not too many of them yet. It's early. If luck is with us, La Roche may be one of the early ones. I 
I don't see him about the fire. No. A few others over there in the shadows, though. Yes, but I can't make out the... Wait. There he is. Where? Over there, alone. Leaning against the back of the tumble. Are you sure that's he? Positive. You can't see his face. The silhouette of his back is enough. His posture. There's something you should notice specially. The way he carries his head. Drooped slightly forward. And I'll remember. But how do we get him out of sight of the others? Hmm, simple. We invite him over here. Stand in that doorway, Tony, and wait. Citizen uh, La Roche? Oui. Who are you, citizen? A, a simple shopkeeper, citizen, who needs a favor. A favor? Of what nature? You will be taking your tumbrel to the prison soon. Oui. I have promised the citizen warden some wine. If you will take it to him, I will... Why should I do your bidding, citizen? Nobody does anything for me. A flagon of wine for yourself, citizen, if you will make the delivery? Mm. All right, citizen. Where is the wine? Bring it here. I will need help. It is in a cask, rather heavy. Where is it? My shop, just beyond the arch. Come. A moment, citizen. How did you know my name was La Roche? My sister told me, citizen. I know no women in this sector. Oh, you have never met her, but she has seen you passing the shop. She has asked about you and learned your name. Why should she make inquiry about me, citizen? She is a young girl, and as such a girl will. She judges a man by his appearance of physical strength. You seem like a man of great power, citizen. Mm -hmm. Shall we go on? Your sister, how old? A tender seventeen. Pretty? She has many suitors. I am strong, citizen. We'll see how strong you are in a moment. The, uh, the uh, wine cask is in this doorway. Where? I can't lift it by myself. Who's in there? <laughs> Not my sister, citizen. Go ahead, Tony. Uh. <laughs> Nicely done, Tony. Citizen La Roche was just telling me how strong he is. Uh, or was. Did you hear his voice? Yeah, a bit, as you came on. How's this? Where? I can't lift it by myself. <laughs> Splendid, old man. Again, he's a lump. Ooh. I must have hit him rather hard. I'm glad you did. After all, the bounder was developing some rather rude thoughts about my 17-year-old sister. Tony exchanged clothes with the unconscious La Roche. Then we made our plans quickly. He's well bound now. Let's cover him over. Right, O. You know which tumble to go to? Yes. But what about you? After you pick up your load of prisoners of the jail and start for the guillotine, enter the Rue de Carousel by the small alley that runs between the old carriage house and the shop of the silversmith. You know the place? Yes. The passage is too narrow for your mounted guards to ride beside the tumble. They will fall behind slightly as you turn into the Rue de Carousel. There's a small platform there. I will leap in with the other prisoners as you make the turn. But I, I don't know what you have in mind, Blakeney. You'll be jumping in with a group of people headed for the guillotine. <laughs> don't worry, Tony. I have a plan to save my neck. How? Well, when we enter the square, you feign great excitement. Take huh? me from the tumble huh? and drag me to the officer and command of the guard. <laughs> and take this paper from me as you do. I can't read without light. What does it say? It says, Dear old friend, do not fear. Deliverance is at hand. And it is signed with the emblem of the Scarlet Pimpernel. What? Well, don't be so astounded, dear Terry. After all, that's why they've set the trap, isn't it? To catch the Scarlet Pimpernel. You mean the opening of the letter, dear old friend? We'll convince them that I know the Scarlet Pimpernel and can identify him. That will create all the excitement we need. As soon as the officer takes the note from you, slip away and make for Lamont's tumble. Oh, it's daring. It has to be daring to work. The mounted guards by his tumble should be off their horses by then, waiting a roll call of the condemned. Be near their horses and ready to move. When? Don't worry. You'll know when. The tumbles were starting towards the prison as Tony and I separated. He rushed to the wagon assigned to La Roche, and I heard an officer bark a reprimand at him for being tardy. I went to the appointed place for the pickup. The first rays of the sun were stabbing through the grey of the dawn sky when the tumbrils full of prisoners turned into the Rue de Carousel. Tony's wagon came by the platform 
And just in time to escape the eye of the mounted guards, I jumped into the tumble. You are you mad, citizen? I'm sorry, I loved you when I jumped aboard. Uh, you'll be even sorrier in a few minutes. This tumble is headed for the guillotine. Oh, yes. I, I know that. If you wish to commit suicide, why inflict yourselves upon sorry creatures who would rather live? Please, lower your voice. You want the guards to hear. They didn't see me. What do we care if the guards hear? Huh? Our thoughts are of death and we want to live. How badly do you want to live? Badly enough to fight? Fight? How? With bare hands against bayonets and guns? Do not exclaim or cry out at what I'm about to say. I can arm you, all of you, with loaded pistols I carry in my belt beneath his jacket. If I give them to you, will you use them when and as I command? In a final bid for life and freedom? Citizen, if you lie... You will die before we reach the guillotine. If you speak the truth, we would gladly die fighting under your command. Uh, All right, then. Carefully. Pass the pistols one by one. If any man who opens his mouth to trade for freedom dies by my hand. Or by mine. We keep our silence. We strike at your order. All right. Careful. An Englishman, monsieur. Yes, my friend. The Scarlet Pimpernel. Does it matter? No, monsieur. We live with you or die with you. Count on it. They were testing the guillotine as the tumbrils rumbled into the square. The huge knife flashed in the air, not yet stained with the blood of the day's executions. The smell of death hovered over the streets like an evil curse. What are you looking for, monsieur? A heavily guarded tumble with but one occupant. Over there, near the steps to the scaffold. His name is Jean-Pierre Lamont. Thank you. I know his name. I know it well. What are your orders, monsieur? I will give you your signal from over there where the troop commandant stands. A short time after the guard takes me there. When I point and start to scream, you must run in the direction I point and set up a clamor. You understand? No. But we will obey. Good. After that, you have your pistols. Use them. Fight your way to safety if you can. Very well, monsieur. Good luck. Good luck to all of you. And you, monsieur. May le bon Dieu go with you. Thank you. Now remember, no harm to the driver. It was time to act. I slipped the spurious note from my pocket and pretended to read it eagerly. Tony caught the signal. He leapt to the side of the tumble and grasped me by the hair. Give me that. Give me that whatever it is. No, no. Let me go. Let me go. Follow it, will you? Ah. Give it to me, traitor. I will break your arm. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, that's better. Oh, dear. Citizen Commander. Citizen Commander. What is that commotion there? What is wrong, citizen? Wait, citizen, wait. I will bring the traitor to you. Come. No, no, no! Why are you bringing this man to me? We have executions to perform. Look, citizen, citizen commander, look! This now, the emblem! The Scarlet Pimpernel! Where did you get this? I do not know. Last night at the prison, it was slid under the door of my cell. A lie, citizen commander. I searched him thoroughly before he entered my chamber. The note was not on him. The Pimpernel is here. He is here in the square. No, I tell you, I swear it. Talk, you fool. The Pimpernel is not going to save you. Do you know his disguise? No. Ah! Answer the citizen commandant. What is his disguise? Is he one of the soldiers? I do not know. You lie. He must have slipped that note to you as you passed him somewhere in the square. You have seen him, so you must know his disguise. Where is the clever devil? Where? Go. Go away and let me talk to the citizen commandant. All right, citizen Arosh. Go. Come now, man. Speak up. I said speak up. If I tell you, will you save me? Yes. You promise. I don't want to die. Expose him. Expose the Pimpernel. And I guarantee you that citizen Chauvelin himself will sign your battle. Tony had reached the horses of the dismounted guards less than 20 feet from Lamont, and the armed men in the tumble in which I had ridden were tensed and waiting. I had only one last decision to make, the selection of a man to accuse. I had seen some of the horrible executions in this bloody square, and I remembered one face, the leering, horrible face of a casket maker who watched the butchery with glee from the door of his shop in the square. He was there in his accustomed place, waiting. I raised my arm. Unpointed. 
What? Who do you mean? The casket maker. That's him. In disguise. The casket maker is the Scarlet Pimpernel! Get him! Seize the casket maker! Men from my tumble started it, and the soldiers lunged in the direction of their move. Even the commandant leapt forward. The casket maker, his leer turned to fright, opened his mouth to scream, but gave way to fear and turned to run. It was all the soldiers needed to convince them. The firing started, and in seconds the square was a melee of panic. I turned away and ran in the opposite direction. Hurry, man, hurry. Where's that more? Here, Martin. You there, halt! Not today, friend. Good shot, Tony. Let's ride. Up, 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 Lenny, up. Starting after us. We'll give them a merry chase. Head out towards Montmartre. We leave the horses as soon as we can and hide. We must be off the streets until night. Uh, right. You all right, Lamar? Weak from hunger, but all right thanks to you, Blakeney. It is you, isn't it, old friend? Yes, Lamar. <laughs> yes, brother. It's I. <laughs> We never reached Montmartre. Troops seemed to be all about the city, mounted and in force. We were obliged to leave the horses and take to the underground maze of the Parisian sewers. Well, they didn't spot us coming down here. We should be reasonably safe here until nightfall. Afraid not, Tony. Within the hour, troops will be working through every tunnel on foot and in boats. If only we had a boat. The flow of the river would take us toward the Arve. Which is exactly the way they'll expect the Pimpernel to move, toward the English Channel. No. If you're certain the pursuit will turn this way, what can we do? Head for the one place they'd never expect to find us. Where? Back to the Rue de Carousel, the home of Madame Guillotine. You can't be serious, Blakeney. I was never more serious, Tony. There's an exit from the sewer not 50 meters from the place where we will seek refuge. What spot do you have in mind? The shop of the casket maker. The man you accused of being the Scarlet Pimpernel? Yes. Oh, Blakeney, I, I don't know. The way those soldiers went after him, he, he must have been killed. I'm quite certain he was, Tony, which will make him especially useful to us when night comes. I don't understand. If the man is dead, Lamont, it's only fitting and proper that he have a funeral. We shall see that he gets it. Oh, it, it sounds impossible. Not at all. It's our passport out of the city. But how? I will drive the funeral cart. You and Tony will walk behind like female relatives of the deceased. Yes, but where can we obtain the necessary clothing? I'm certain we'll find what we need in the casket maker shop. Break me. It won't work. The funeral cortege must have a permit signed by the commandant, and we don't have one. I shall get one tonight. But how? In the simplest way. By going to the commandant and asking for it. We reached the casket maker shop without detection and hid until darkness had fallen. Even then, soldiers with torches were all about the city, questioning and searching. From the expected cache of clothing in the casket maker shop, I dressed myself in the heavy black garb of an old woman and made my way to the quarters of the commandant. Well? Well, speak up, citizeness. What is it? Do you have news of the Scarlet Pimpernel? Is that it? Yes, citizen, I have. You! Do not cry out, citizen. I hold a gun beneath the shawl. You! You English devil! You look like an old cop. Inside, monsieur. Save the compliments for another time. What do you want of me? A funeral permit. Make one out and sign it. And if I refuse? I guarantee you that somebody else will sign one tomorrow for your funeral. Very well. Make haste, monsieur. I do not like the way you dally. As he wrote, I could see the tension in his face. He was listening for something, waiting for something. He finished the order, held it out to me, then... Help! Help! You fool! Even as he had cried out, I had seen the glow of torches and a squad of soldiers passed outside. My blow felled him and I leapt across his body, tearing off the old woman's garb to give my legs freedom of movement. I waited until the soldiers stormed up on the porch and started hammering at the door with their rifles. Then I ran to the window, dived through it. Him. He has turned into the hoodie at Jim. The horses! After him! 
Their chase was hopeless in the dark of the night. I made my way back to the shop of the casket maker. Tony and Lamont were already dressed in the morning apparel of women. I quickly slipped into the uniform of a funeral driver and did as much as I could to disguise my face. How did you get cut, Blakeney? Breaking a window. Tell you later. Why do you hurry so? You said we would leave just before dawn. Yes, I'd planned to bind and gag the commandant, but he cried out. The soldiers heard him. I rendered him unconscious, but he won't be that way for long. Then they'll know about the permit. Pray not too soon. Are you all ready? Ready. Ready. Let's go. The only our gate. It's nearest. <laughs> We drove to the gate. The streets were quiet except for the soldiers, but no undue attention was given to our wagon. We were not stopped until we reached the barricade. Halt! Halt there! For a funeral procession, eh, citizen? Oui, citizen. At such an hour of the night. It is the wish of the women who follow. The home of the deceased was in Orléans. They want to bury him there. You have your permit to leave the city? Yes. Very well. But as a precaution... Yes? My men and I will have a look inside the casket. But... Oh, never mind, citizen. Comrades, come. Oui, oui. Come on. You rise the lid of the box. Well, he seems dead enough. All right, comrades, put it back. That was most inconsiderate, citizen. Do we mean... Now do not tell me how to act, citizen. I know my duty. Suppose the Scarlet Pimpanel had been hidden in that casket. Even you might not have known it. He's a clever devil, citizen. Mm, I'm sure he'd find himself overmatched with you, citizen. Depend on that. The Scarlet Pimpanel will never pass through the Orleans gates. <laughs> not while I command it. All right, comrades, let the funeral procession pass. Good night, citizen. Good night. Go! Cool.